Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I created my first set of cards using the February 2021 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made them and get a couple tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared with you the newest sheet load of cards, which is a February 2021 edition. In that video, I let you know how you could download the printable for yourself if you're a subscriber to my channel. After you watch this video, if you want to go download that file, make sure to watch yesterday's video, which I will link in the description box below. And since it is the second of the month, that means my collaborators are going to be joining me today and showing you their sets of sheet load. Make sure that once you're done here, you stop by their YouTube channels, Instagram accounts, and blogs. Everybody is linked in the description box below, and I know that they'd love to have you stop by. Today, I'll be showing you the process for that first set, and I do have a couple tips along the way, so make sure you keep watching. Before I get started on the process, I will share with you the main products that I'll be using today. If I do add anything later on, I will be sure to let you know, but as always, make sure to leave those questions in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. I will, of course, be using the free printable that I provided yesterday. This month, if you follow the supply list and the cutting guides, you're going to yield nine cards. For my sentiments, I decided that I would reuse the printable that I provided for free last month. If you are interested in checking this file out and downloading it, I will link that video in the description box. There are five or six pages, lots of different themes and occasions. Today, I decide to go with the ones like missing you, sending you hugs, hello. The instructions call for two pieces of coordinating cardstock for some matting. This month I will be using colored cardstock for my card bases, and since this might be hard to see the writing on, I will add some white paper or cardstock in the inside for my personal message. Now because I printed my sentiment on the white cardstock, I will not need that one piece for CS2. For my pattern papers today, I'm going to be using three papers from the Chloe line by Bella Boulevard. I thought this was nice and bright and cheery for some thinking of you cards. Let's get crafty. To get started today, I'm going to be cutting down my three pattern papers per the instruction on the sheet. Now I won't go over the measurements in great detail because you can get it on the printable, but I want to show you the basics of how to cut this. The first thing I do is cut three strips from each pattern paper starting at the top. I cut one strip that is five and a quarter inch tall one that is four and a quarter inches tall, and then finally one that is one and three quarters inches tall. Then I bring those same pieces back in, but this time rotated. That top strip got cut into three pieces that are four inches wide, and now this next part is what you'll want to pay close attention to. When you cut those next two strips, you'll want to make sure that you're paying close attention to where you're cutting. The rest of the pattern paper pieces will get cut to 3.125 inches wide, or 3 and 1 8 inches. Make sure that you're not cutting it to 3 and a quarter because it won't work out in the end. The 1 8 inch mark is a mark that is halfway between 3 and 3 and a quarter. I cut this down until each piece has given me nine pieces for my final cards, and I do the same thing for the remaining two pattern papers. Next, I brought in two pieces of aqua cardstock to cut down for CS1. I will be cutting each of these sheets the same, but if you follow the instructions, you end up with 10 of each piece and you do only need nine. The first thing I do, just like with the pattern paper, are cut the strips. That first one was four and a half inches tall. 
the next one is three and a quarter inches tall, and then left over should be a three quarter of an inch strip. If you follow the cutting guides, you're gonna cut this into four pieces that are two and a half inches wide. But because I'm gonna be using a punch to get my fishtail, I ended up cutting these to two and three quarters inches wide, and I was able to get four out of that strip. Next, I grabbed the second strip that I cut, the one that was three and a quarter inches tall, and I'm cutting this into two pieces that are four and a half inches wide. Now, later on the cards, these will be rotated because the top strip and the middle one contain the same piece, or CS1A. I do still need to get one CS1B out of this piece of cardstock. So once I have cut all of the A's, I cut another strip that is three quarters inches wide by two and three quarters. And then finally for CS1, I grab that top strip that I cut to four and a half inches tall and I cut this into three pieces that are three and a quarter inches wide. Here's a look at five of each of the pieces that you get from each cardstock. When you cut that second cardstock, you can either go ahead and cut it so you end up with 10 pieces of each, or just stop once you get to the nine for the cards that you're making today. I did decide to step out of my box today and instead of using white card bases from my stash, I did pull in some orange card stock for those. These just get cut in half to four and a quarter inches wide and then you fold them down so they're five and a half inches tall when folded. Now keep in mind, just like with the CS1 card stock, you will end up with one extra card base. I just set mine to the side for my sheet load leftovers later this month. Now is the time that I would cut down my cardstock for my image and or sentiment, but I will not be following these cutting guides since I'm using the printable. Now with this sentiment square, it's a great opportunity to cut these down to whatever size you need for your image and or sentiment. I went ahead and just cut this sheet using the crop marks given. So each piece ended up being two inches wide by two and a half inches tall, which is actually the dimension that the printable calls for. Now I did go ahead and cut it down so I had 15 sentiments, but I will choose just nine of these that I want to use for my final cards. Off camera, I cut down some lightweight white cardstock to go on the inside of my orange card bases. These pieces were four inches wide by five and a quarter inches tall. Now that all of the pieces are cut, it's time to do some punching. The first thing I did was bring in my We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper and I will be rounding the necessary edges. First, I will round the right two corners of CS1A, and then I will also round the right two corners of pattern paper piece B. Then finally, that small one, pattern paper piece C, I just round the bottom corner edge. Later, they'll be stacked up like I just showed you, but of course, it won't be the same pattern paper on top of each other. I continue this same process until I have corner rounded all of the pieces that I needed to. The next punching that I'm gonna do is the fishtail on the end of CS1B. I will be using this Stampin' Up! punch, but if you don't have something like this, you can definitely just cut that fishtail by hand. On this, I purposely made these strips three quarters of an inch tall because that is one of the sizes that fits in the punch. All you have to do is slide your piece into the punch, press down on the right side, and then you have a fishtail. Once I had all of those fishtails cut, I decided that these could use some texture. So I brought in my Cuddlebug Dots embossing folder and I just ran each of those through my Cuddlebug in this folder. I just like the little bit of texture it gives these pieces instead of just being a solid plain blue.
The next thing I decided to do was some matting. These are both piece B's from the pattern paper and cardstock one. And all I did was add adhesive to the back of the pattern paper piece. And then this got aligned to the left of the mat and centered from top to bottom. You'll notice there that I have borders around all of the edges except on the left. I continued this same process for the rest of the matted pieces. Once all of those pieces were matted, it was now time to put together my card kits. And all I mean by this is I grab all the pattern papers I need for each card. Now when I do this, I like to lay my pattern papers out in the same order in all three pieces. So I have like pattern one, pattern two, pattern three from left to right for each. When I grab the first card kit, I take pattern one from the first piece, pattern two from the second piece, and pattern three from the third piece. This ensures that I have a mixture of all three pattern papers. For my second card kit, once again I take pattern one from the first piece, but then I skip to pattern three for the second piece and come back to pattern two for the third piece. This just ensures a little bit of variety in the final cards. For the last of the three card kits, you can do these in either of the first two ways, whether it's one, two, three, or one, three, two, but you do need to make sure that you do the same process for the rest of the card kits in sets of three. Otherwise, when you get to the end, you are gonna have some pattern papers that are doubled up in a card kit. I continue putting my card kits together in the same fashion until I have nine kits all ready to go to be assembled. And speaking of assembly, it's time to start putting the card fronts together. I pull over one of the card kits I just made and I put pattern paper piece C at the bottom of pattern paper piece B. This then gets adhesive put on the back and aligned to the left center of the card. Once again, it's flush on the left and there are borders on the top, right, and bottom sides. While I put a few more of the card fronts together, I thought it was a perfect time for the QOTV or the question of the video. I have been asking these in the last few videos and it's been so great getting to know a little bit more about you and sharing a little bit more about me. Please remember if you do answer the QOTV to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV in your comment. That way I know for sure that you want me to see what you've written. Today I would like to know, have you ever made a sheet load of cards? I've had people comment in the past that they've been watching these videos for almost a year, some of them, but they have never just gotten in there and made one. You know, of course, I have made lots of sheet loads. I have actually made a sheet load of sheet loads, but I would love to know more about you, so make sure to leave that in your comment below. I decided that I wanted to spice up my sentiments just a little bit. So to bring out some more of that orange from the card base, I brought in my Gina K Designs Tangerine Twist Ink Cube and my Stamps by Judith Dots Peg Stamp. What I'm gonna do is put three sets of dots on each of the sentiments that I chose. As I was looking through some subscriber cards from the January sheet load of cards, I noticed that a few of you kind of fancied up your printed sentiments with some stamps. So I thought this would be a great opportunity. I just love how we can all be inspired by each other. Before I add those sentiments to the card fronts, I do want to get my fishtail banners put on. Now you might notice here that I just put adhesive on the left side of the fishtail, leaving the area on the right without adhesive. Because there are quite a few layers on the left, I didn't want to adhere the right side down and just have it look uneven. So I decided to just leave it hanging in the air. This fishtail banner gets placed onto the card front aligned with the right, and then I place it so it was about two thirds of the way down on pattern paper piece B. You'll see there I have more yellow at the top than I do underneath the fishtail. 
I continued this same process for all nine of the card fronts and I realized after a couple cards why am I putting these on raised up in the air. I recently changed my desk to a standing desk and I'm trying to get used to it. I did find out it was much easier to leave the card front on the tabletop and then adhere my piece down aligned. Once all of those fishtails were on there, it was time to get these card fronts placed on those orange card bases. This just got centered on the front, and then you'll notice off camera on the inside, I did go ahead and put in those white pieces of cardstock for the personal message. Once again, I continued this same process until I had all nine cards ready for the sentiment. Speaking of sentiments, it's time to finish these cards off by adding the sentiments to each of the card fronts. I did want to go ahead and pop these up a little bit for a little added dimension, so I brought in my Stampin' Up! dimensionals, placed five on the back of the sentiment, and then I placed this onto the card front. This got aligned to the right of the two pattern paper pieces. You could adjust this though however you would like. Once again, same process for all cards until they were all finished. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made this first set of cards using the February 2021 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go check out all of the collaborators and leave them some love. Everyone is linked in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.